What's up guys? This is Teddy. I'm going to be talking about SPY today. I'm going to be talking about how I'm feeling at the moment on the overall market, the outlook for the next few months, the outlook for the next few weeks. I'm going to be looking at the weekly and the daily, and I'm going to be giving all of my thoughts. There's going to be a few things that are a little bit unconventional. There's going to be a few things that will probably appeal to most people. So stick around, watch my, my little opinions here, see if you agree, and let me know what you guys think in the replies here. Let me know if you guys agree with what I'm saying or if you completely disagree, if you're seeing stuff that I'm not seeing, uh, if you think the stuff I'm seeing is bullshit, whatever it is, you know, drop it in the replies. Let's have a little bit of fun. Let's have a, a conversation. Let's talk. But first thing, we're here on the weekly, and I'm going to be talking about high volume sell-offs here. And you guys can see the past two weeks, so it says here Monday the 16th and Monday the 23rd, those are the weekly candles. Those were two pretty solid red candles, large bodies on them, nice volume on them. It's not world or groundbreaking volume, but it's definitely volume that should be noticed. It's definitely volume that's above average. So I'm going to draw a little square around that. Uh, but I want you guys to see kind of what SPY has done in the past when we've had low volume or high volume sell-offs. There's one right here. And then there is another, where is it at? Right here. So when you see these high volume, large bodied red candles on SPY, so right here is a great example of it. Monday the 13th of June, that's the weekly candle. The reaction after that high volume sell off was very, very bullish. It didn't even have high volume on the bullish move. It actually had low volume on the bullish move. But we bottomed here at 366, and then this bull run ran all the way to 430. And then another example is this Monday, the 6th of March weekly candle. We bottomed that weekly candle about 386, and then we pushed down the next week to 381. But then we bounced after that high volume sell off, and this thing ran all the way to 460. So these high volume sell offs. You know, a lot of people are going to tell you bearish, 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 which I agree to a point. They are bearish, but when we've seen, you know, this much, uh, you know, this many times, the bounces happen right after those high volume sell offs. We can even add another one in here. It's not as pretty as the other ones, uh, but right here, you know, high volume on this final sell off candle, which bottomed at 357. And then SPY bottomed at 348 two weeks later and ran all the way to 409. So after these high volume sell-offs, we're seeing it time and time again where these, these bounces occur and they're they're sustained. You know, we've seen multiple times where it's went up 30, 40 dollars. So I think it's worth noting that even though we had a high volume sell-off the past two weeks, it's not the end of the world and it's not a setup that's consistently been profitable for bears on SPY. It's a setup that's actually been consistently profitable for bulls on SPY, which like I said, is a little bit counterintuitive, um, but you know, we're, we're trading what's in front of us. We're not trying to you know, make conclusions that have not worked in the past. Let's talk about the support level here. So we're moving on past that high volume sell off kind of weird setup situation. Uh, and we're gonna be talking about this support level, which is pretty massive. Uh, let me get this drawn in here, right? So this this ranges from about, well, I don't think I want it to be at 403. I think this is, maybe we need to move it up. Probably closer to 410 here. Yeah, let's move it up to right there. So this support level ranges from about, you know, this is 408.50-ish all the way up to about 417-ish, um, you know, give or take a, a 50 cents or, or so each way. But this zone here has had multiple, multiple bounces. We had one in February, one in March, one in June, one in September, one in December, one in February. And then we used it as support here in May. This thing has been very, very strong. There's been one, two, three, four, five, six, seven instances where this zone has worked as a very, very nice support level or resistance level. More so resistance in the past, but we know that resistance levels often flip into a support level uh, and vice versa. But the big thing here, guys, this zone is already starting to work. So we're seeing this, this bounce happen and we're seeing it happen fairly quick. 
We touched the bottom side of this zone last week, and then immediately this week, within three days, this is Wednesday, so within three days, this thing is already out of the zone and actually has a little bit of separation, 417 to about 420, $3 of separation from that zone. This is going to be massive moving forward because when we start to see bounces and when they happen fairly quickly, you know, when we linger in a zone, it's a little bit it's a little bit tougher. A good example would be right here where this had been resistance multiple times. You know, we saw resistance. I already explained how many times it was used. We lingered in this zone. A lot of people thought it was going to reject. We lingered in it and then we just used it as support and we ran it. So I think the fact that it's it's having a good reaction, a strong reaction, a quick reaction is very, very important to, to keep in mind moving forward. So everything on this weekly for me is looking pretty bullish. Everything has been bullish. I've been watching this 410 level for a while. I tweeted about it a couple times and said, you know, 410, I'll be a buyer. It's starting to work. I do want to move down to the daily now. Uh, so let me adjust this here. So this daily, there's a pretty a pretty strong upward trend line formed. Well, I kind of fucked that up. We have three taps on this. So we have a tap here, a tap here, a tap here. So three taps, the trend line is completely formed. But the thing I want you guys to notice is the amount of room we have between current price uh, and that tap. So a current price, 420, you know, a week from now, if we were to run into this trend line, it'd be at 440. So that's significant, uh, you know, breathing room for SPY here. Lower lows uh, is something to definitely keep an eye on too. We have one here, a second one here, and it looks like we're forming a third one here. Not necessarily very bullish, you know, lower lows, lower highs. We're seeing a trend start to form. We're also seeing, you know, a little bit of a bear flag that was happening yesterday and the day before. It's very close to being invalidated today because when I look at bear flags, uh, I look a little bit differently than others. Um, I'm kind of the person who I want my flags to be a few candles. Some people really look at flags and they want them to be 20, 30 daily candles long and have this back and forth action. I'm, I'm more of a momentum where we get a flag pull and then two, three candles as a pullback. And then we continue in that direction when the volume flows back in. Uh, but this, you know, to me, this is not a perfect flag because one, I was talking in my discord this morning. We actually had this come up. I think the results versus effort put in on this Friday candle, this red candle, um, you know, at first glance, this looks really nice. It looks very, very strong red. But when you kind of dive into the numbers a little bit more, they didn't really gain a lot from that candle because Thursday closed at 4.12.50 and Friday closed at 4.10.75. So for as much volume and as large as this candle, they had to put in a lot of effort to push that candle all the way down. They only gained, they gained less than $2 uh, of movement, the bears did, on that candle. And then we got this low volume pullback. So, you know, low volume, usually I'd be on board with that being a bear flag. But I really wasn't sold because of this, you know, low results from the amount of effort they put in on Thursday to Friday. And then today is almost the nail in the coffin. If today closes green, I'd be tempted to think this pullback, you know, is a bit too far. I'd be tempted to think, you know, maybe this this pullback is not actually a pullback at this point. And also today being FOMC, we're going to get volume flow in. So one way or the other, you know, volume is going to come in and, and, and a lot of movement is going to occur. But the thing that causes, you know, a little bit of pause as a bull, if you're looking at this as someone who's bullish, moving forward on this daily is going to be this resistance that we formed back in October. Um, there's a pretty, pretty solid support level that is now resistance that we're actually rejecting today as, I, as I'm making this video. So that's going to be a very, very important zone moving forward. But if we look at a daily zone formed in October based on two bounces versus a weekly zone, formed over two years and seven bounces, that weekly zone is gonna, is gonna trump it every single time. So I think this daily zone could get overshadowed by the bounce out of that weekly zone we were talking about uh, on that last chart. We also have the opportunity 
to do something pretty damn silly here uh, and create like a mini inverse head and shoulders. So we have a shoulder here started it, you know, the, the, I guess, what is that called? Yeah, the shoulder level is right about 419.38. Um, and so if we were to bounce up to 425 and then come back down to 419 and then bounce again, we would have a mini inverse head and shoulders. We also have the opportunity of creating a larger head and shoulders with the neckline at 437 and the shoulder line at 421. So a lot of opportunities for head and shoulders here, which is, you know, we don't have those opportunities a lot. There's not a lot of them that you see that you're like, all right, well, this could form. But we definitely have one, actually two here that could form. The other thing I want you guys to notice on this daily is uh, the amount of times that we've seen this area get congested. This 410 to 420, you see all the movement here. 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 There's, there's just been multiple, multiple times that we've seen congestion in this area, which, as I mentioned on the weekly, usually means that the zone is not as strong as we previously thought. We're not seeing congestion here. Not a lot of congestion. To me, what that means is the zone is very strong. The support zone that we were talking about on that weekly is very, very strong. So we're seeing it, you know, a show of strength on the weekly and on the daily. It's lining up to be bullish and a bullish bounce out of that support level. But again, we talked, there's that small resistance here. There's also the trend line above and there's the lower highs and lower lows. So the daily is kind of conflicting with the weekly here. Uh, for me, the weekly will win out there and I'll kind of lean a little bit bullish due to the weekly being more bullish. But the daily does have its weight here. It does have a little bit of uh, confluence to the downside. If we wanted to you know, follow the trend, this would probably say you should short this. But if you're wanting to you know, follow the overall trend on the weekly, you know, maybe this is a long opportunity. So there's a lot of things grappling with each other. But uh, in the end, I'm feeling pretty bullish based on the reaction to that support zone and how strong that support zone has been over the past two years. So if you guys have any questions, uh, if you want to discuss it more, you know, you know where to find me on Twitter. You can also reply to this video on YouTube, whatever it is, uh, and I'll talk. We can have a conversation. So I appreciate all of you guys for watching this. I hope this helps and have a good night.